Eco-hydrology is a difficult sounding word describing the means of achieving something very simple, the sustainable management of river basins. It combines three essential elements, hydrology, the science of water, and ecology, the science of life. They combine to help us understand the way that human societies use water, its plants and its animals social and political sciences. The idea of eco-hydrology is relatively new, 10 years old. Before that, scientists and managers of water were stuck in the narrow way of thinking that they had been taught. Politicians decided what society needed based only on economics. Engineers built dams to provide what was asked for, drinking water, hydroelectric power, irrigation water, and ecological scientists moved fish and plants across the globe to increase yields. The new breed of water managers, both professionals and ordinary people who use water, eco-hydrologists, try to understand the effects of such activities upon the whole water system, the river basin. There is almost no river basin on the planet that is free from human impact. Indeed, water is the essential service to mankind. Eco-hydrologists seek to ensure that the services that a river basin can provide will be provided not just for us, but for our grandchildren and their grandchildren too. Eco-hydrology tries to understand the whole river basin in order to make decisions about the water in any one part of it. In Africa, eco-hydrology is a very new discipline one river basin that illustrates the importance of this basin scale understanding is the Waso Nero, which flows from Kenya into Tanzania. The Waso Nero South water basin is one of the most important, yet the least known or understood basins in East Africa. Its importance lies not in the cities that it supports, as the Athi Thika River Basin supports Nairobi but in three unique ecosystems already vital to Kenya's foreign exchange earnings. The Wasonero rises in an area of Kenyan highlands that has seen great controversy in recent decades, the Mao Forest. It is one of Kenya's five highland water towers that between them provide domestic and industrial and agricultural water for almost the entire country of 40 million people. Yet the Mao, the largest area of forest in the country, is the only one of the five yet unprotected. Large areas have been and continue to be cleared for timber, charcoal making and agricultural settlement, almost all of it illegal. The Mao is home to many endangered species of forest animals and birds. Kenya's last indigenous forest people, the Ogyek, in addition to its hydrological importance as the source of rivers supplying western Kenya and southwest the Mara Serengeti ecosystem. Immediately downstream of the Mao forest are important areas of agriculture, large scale wheat growing and vegetable cultivation. These are suffering from greater seasonal differences in river flow as the Mao forest loses its sponge effect as well as overall loss of discharge from many new unregulated upstream abstractions. In its middle reaches, the Waso Nero flows southeast onto the floor of the Rift Valley, through the town of Narok, known by many tourists as the gateway to the Masai Mara Game Reserve. Here, the floor of the Rift is hot and dry and home to the Masai community. In this area of Kenya's South Rift, the Maasai are striving hard to maintain their traditional pastoralist lifestyle. 
They are trying to integrate it with the benefits of modern Western society, such as education, while keeping at bay incompatible aspects such as settled, intensive agriculture. One key plank in the Maasai's success in this venture is support provided from outside, visionary NGOs such as the African Conservation Centre. ACC has helped the Maasai set up several ecotourism ventures, including research, training ventures that themselves help the Maasai better understand and manage their land both for themselves and for fee-paying visitors. Crucial to the success of such ventures and to the sustainability of the Maasai traditional way of life is the eco-hydrology of the South Rift, which is driven by the discharge of the Wasonero River. The river flows into a large fluctuating wetland, Champole Swamp. The swamp and the groundwater system linked to it provide a grazing refuge for livestock in the dry season as well as water, food and building materials all year round. The river, riparian zone and swamp provide the basis for the biodiversity of bird and mammal species upon which ecotourism depends. The swamp is a sponge, not only holding back water to maintain its wetland vegetation during the dry season, but also regulating the flow of water on the last part of its journey into Lake Natron. This lake, over 100 kilometres long and 20 kilometres wide, most of it across the border in northern Tanzania, forms one of the most extreme environments on Earth. At low altitude and very hot, it is an alkaline, saline lake as a consequence of evaporation being the only outlet for water and the many volcanic hot springs along its shoreline. Its extreme chemistry and large size means that very few species can survive in its waters. Those that can thrive in very large numbers, free of competition for resources and, if the lake is large enough, at very low risk of predation. Lake Natron is the only lake in Africa with these characteristics and it has become the major breeding ground for the two old world flamingos, greater and lesser, and the only breeding site in East Africa. It thus sustains a species, the lesser flamingo, which is a vital tourist attraction and money earner to both Kenya and Tanzania in their national parks, such as Nakuru and Manyara. The Waso Nero makes up about half of Lake Natron's flow, so it is vital in maintaining the water level. Only when the level is moderately high and stable, with small islands of crystalline salt, or Chirona, can birds breed free of disturbance. It does not happen either predictably or frequently. Any major change to the river's discharge pattern could severely reduce the bird's chances of successful breeding. The river also plays an important role in flamingo feeding because, as it spreads out over a large shallow estuary at the north of the lake, it creates ideal conditions for microbial growth, a blue-green slime, on the surface of the mud in shallow water. Sometimes hundreds of thousands of lesser flamingos can feed on these microbes, and hundreds of greater flamingos on the insects that also find the slime nutritious. So, at the end of its life, the waters of the Waso Nero play a critical role in sustaining one of East Africa's greatest wildlife spectacles, and a real dollar owner. In the middle of its life, it sustains the livelihoods of East Africa's most charismatic pastoralist communities, one of the very few still living in harmony with wildlife. And the Waso Nero is born in the largest forest left in Kenya, home to endangered species and an indigenous forest community. This is a river with eco-hydrological characteristics of global importance, and it's urgently in need of help.